one. Hello and welcome to NJ Biz Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Kanige. Joining me today is Debbie Hart, the founding president and CEO of BioNJ. Debbie, welcome. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you. Um, first of all, how are you doing? Um, how's your organization handling uh, what, uh, the, 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 <laughs> what we're all going through? <laughs> the thing that's out there? How the are you doing? <laughs> the thing that's 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 well said um you know it's it's um it's certainly been a challenge um i have to say our team has really risen to the occasion i've been just so in all of all of them how they've really just stepped to the plate reinvented themselves we've reinvented the organization to respond to all of this and you know actually more importantly probably is what the industry's done the industry's really stepped up to address a disease that we didn't even know existed just a couple of months ago um, and they've you know they've done all that they could to to make a difference and more to come but lots of progress already okay well that, that i wanted to ask you about that tell me what you're hearing from from the industry from your members uh they are mostly life sciences companies correct so they should yes. be pretty much on the front lines of this i would think so how what are you hearing about uh, about how they're handling it and what they're doing Sure. And so our membership is the whole ecosystem. It's those who support the, the companies, the R&D companies as well. But talking about the R&D companies, um, it really is extraordinary. So again, a disease that we didn't know about just a couple of months ago. They've looked in their portfolios. They've uh, you know been creative as they always do. Um, and they have really, there are more than 500 different programs uh, globally to address COVID. And there are any number of them that are happening here in New Jersey, more than 40 of them. Mm -hmm. We saw Rutgers had the saliva test that, you know, was that gained approval. GenScript had an approval. And many of our companies are on the, the very front of the vaccine line. Right. And we're hopeful that, uh, you know, that one of them or, or anyone, frankly, around the world, but hopefully a New Jersey company will have a, will make a difference on that front as well. And the mean, and meanwhile, they've been taking care of their employees. Um, they have been, uh, you know, stalwart in, in trying to support all of, all of the efforts going on, including making donations and that sort of thing. So I'm very, very proud of our ecosystem. Right. And, and most of your member companies are, have been operating. They use are essential businesses. So they've been, they've been going in at full tilt pretty much throughout this entire process. They have. I mean, labs have been able to operate since the very beginning. Um, and then, you know, they have essential things going on, obviously, clinical trials, et cetera. And so, yes, they have been operating, whether it's from home or, you know, actually right. on site. Right. And I, I've spoken to a few people that even though even though those companies are working, it's it's it, it, it's not it's not perfect. There's there's there've been supply chain disruptions. There are problems, obviously, with with vendors and 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 even at the, at the, with with end users. Uh, what are you hearing from from your folks um, about those kinds of problems? Are they they working through them, or have, have, have they really had to change the way they do things? Well, I think, you know, in many cases, we've all had to change the way we've done, we're doing things, right? And, um, you know, what we're actually looking at is the possibilities for the things that are being created now that will and should continue, you know, post COVID-19, um, po uh, post this pandemic. Um, and so we're actually excited about some of those things. But certainly there have been uh, struggles and, you know, trials and tribulations on in terms of continuing clinical trials, getting patients to sites and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, the industry's working around it. I think the use of data and as one great example of where, uh, you know, something that we learned during COVID-19, where that actually could make a difference moving forward. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you, you, your organization is holding, you're in the middle of a three-day virtual HR conference, right, which we're going to talk about in a, in a minute. Uh, and, and the first one I thought was fascinating. And uh, there was a lot of discussion during that about how quickly companies had to, especially pharmaceutical companies, life sciences companies, your membership, had to move quickly and do a lot of innovations very, very quickly. Um, how, are you, uh, how, are they, how are they handling that? I mean, were they, have they been able to, to get those things, change the way that, rethink the way they, they, they do things as, they, as they've been going along here? Certainly, you know, it's what we've all been called to do, right? Uh, you know, uh, what is it, uh, you know, the need is the, is the mother of invention, right. right? When there's a need, you find a way. And that's, you know, that's frankly what we've all been doing. Okay. And is, is there anything in the state's response? I mean, are, are you, how, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Has the state done enough? Federal government done enough? I mean, are you getting, are you get the, you get the sense that, that folks are satisfied with the, with the governmental response to all of this? Or is, there, or is there something more that they could be doing or should be doing? 
Well, you know, I mean, there's such a tremendous need and some of the needs we don't even know yet, right? The ramifications we don't even know yet. I would, um, uh, probably the last place I'd want to be right now is in any one of their shoes. I mean, I think that our governor has been absolutely extraordinary. And while, of course, there are folks that are frustrated and, um, you know, and, 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 you know, things have had to be closed and, uh, but I think our governor has been very strategic and thoughtful um, and, um, and uh, practical in his approach. Um, the federal government, uh, you know, I think in terms of the money, there will never be enough. There will just never be enough. But I think that everyone has tried to, you know, respond, uh, for the most part, everyone has tried to respond um, as quickly and as strategically and thoughtfully as possible. Um, you know, but throughout New Jersey, I think whether it's the governor's office or the Department of Labor um, or the, uh, the Economic Development Authority, it's just extraordinary what, the, what they've done in such a difficult time and in such tremendous need. Okay. So tell me about the, the virtual HR conference. Um, is, is, is this the first one of the, these things that you've, that you've done or um, what, what's the genesis of it and what were you trying to accomplish? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. And thank you so much for participating. That's oh, you know, just pleasure. wonderful. I to have it, as you. I said before, um, I thought it was fascinating, a fascinating discussion. Good. So. Well, thank you. Um, so that, you know, as I talked about, oh, everyone's reinventing themselves. That's one of the things that we did first. Um, you know, it was abundantly clear that very early on, it would be a long time before we were back to in-person meetings. And so um, our team took a look at what was out there in terms of virtual platform opportunities and, and found one that uh, we think we thought would work. Um, and now we, have, we do have data on, under our belts uh, from last Tuesday's conference, which you participated in to say, right. indeed it does. We did lots of uh, Zooms and that sort of thing um, in the, uh, the couple months since the middle of March. But last Tuesday was our first real launch into a virtual okay. conference. And we've declared that we're virtual for the rest of 2020. Mm -hmm. And we'll see, you know, see where it goes. But yeah, we were, we were very pleased um, with the way the platform worked and, you know, the interest and the participation um, and, and the feedback that we've gotten since then. Okay. So that one was, uh, as I recall, forecasting for business, COVID-19 forecasting for business. And then you had an employment law um, uh, session. Um, and so what have you got coming up? You've got two more of these, right? On June, tomorrow, June 30th, and then July 7th, I'm going to say, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So we will be looking at leadership and, you know, the need for empathetic leadership. Um, we will be looking at, uh, in actually the July 7th session, looking at how the industry and how companies should be and, and are responding to um, what's happening in, in racial equality, which we think, uh, you know, is obviously a very, a very important topic and a very timely topic. So we'll be looking at that as well. Um, we have, you know, uh, there will be more discussion on uh, bringing companies, uh, people back to work because, uh, you know, as I said, some are still working from home. So, um, and then continue discussion of the really important topic of uh, the legalities of all the things that we're facing. So um, it's, it's it, we're, we've tried to look at the, uh, the full array of, of things that are keeping our, our C-level people up at night, our industry people up at night, and in this case, specifically our HR people up at night. And, um, and that's where we're really focused. Right, I, I thought it was interesting, the, especially the, the, the discussion of, of what it would take to get people back. And, and one of the things I, uh, in, in some of my discussions I've heard is that there's a lot of fear that's gonna have to be overcome. So it's, I, I think the kinds of things that, that, that you're talking about actually helping people get through this is going to be critical, it seems to me. For sure. I mean, mental illness, you know, our mental health is, um, you know, is, is right up there with the things that we need to be concerned about and, and thinking about. Right. And so for people who want to register, I'm assuming you have, you have to register, they should go to bionj.org. Is, uh, is that the best place to get information and, and sign up for yeah, these things? That would be perfect. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Well, Debbie Hart, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for spending some time. Jeff, it is my absolute pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity and please stay safe and well. Same to you. And thank you all for watching. Until next time, you stay safe and well. Thank you.